you. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, and formally open this special town meeting. I have determined that a quorum is in fact present, and I have examined the return of the warrant and find it in order. Uh, at this point, I'd ask you to turn towards the flag and pledge allegiance if you're comfortable. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Just check it. Which is standing. Name three. Uh, as you see from the warrant, uh, we do have a lot to cover tonight. We have a couple of uh, substantial articles. So we're going to try to move through this as quickly as possible while also giving everyone that would like to speak uh, a chance to do that. I'd ask that to the best of your abilities, you limit your comments to your most meaningful points just so we can hear as many voices and, and make uh, fair deliberations. Uh, again, while opinions may vary greatly on some of the articles before us tonight, I do hope we can respect each other and do, do that throughout the meeting. Um, at check-in, everyone should have received the town meeting packet. It's, it's very helpful to keep it with you as we go through the meeting. You'll see the uh, warrant in there. The warrant is essentially the notice to uh, the town of what will be discussed tonight. The actual motions may vary slightly, so the warrant's meant to be noticed, and then the actual motions will, will cover what you're voting on. Uh, If uh, you'd like to make any amendments to any of the motions that are made, those amendments have to be in writing. So you would need to come forward with your motions. Uh, we'll have a pad and pad for you. One sec. And at that point, uh, I would uh, entertain the amendments. Excuse me, one sec. Okay. Apparently, we ran out of the guides, so. Um, to get creative and see if we can do something so we don't have those. But if you are with a significant other or family member you can share, that's great. Um, if you wish to speak, you do need to, you need to be recognized. You need to come forward to the microphone. So there will be no comments from your seats unless you're unable to come down and you would state that first. Um, again, when you do come down to speak, if you can just state your name and your screen address, that'd be great. <laughs> Looks like we're getting some back. It's great. Appreciate it. And with that, I'd like to just introduce the head table starting from the far end. If you can just state your name and your position, I'd appreciate it. Jim Cambius, Finance Yeah, so if you can't hear, just go ahead and just direct that to me. So that, that happens a lot. We don't want to do that. Beth Brown, Finance Committee. Mark Brennan, Finance Committee, Capital Improvement Committee. Julie Chalkon, Finance Committee. Tim Hilchey, Select Board, Board of Health. Trevor McDaniel, Select Board, Board of Health. Carolyn Nass, Select Board, and Board of Health. Brenda Hill, Town Accountant. Lisa Mead, Town Council. Thank you. Uh, I do have some initial motions, so these are what we call moderator motions. I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article be considered, and further, that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived, where the article as printed can, in the opinion of the moderator, be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Second. Essentially, that lets me go back to the guide that you all have instead of listening to someone read the entire motion. Uh, unless it changes substantially, we would go with uh, the reading of what's in there. So, any discussion on that or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I should have noted, uh, if there are, when we get into the, the more substantial motions, you can just use your green uh, handout to help if we need to count, which is easier to see. Um, I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Casey Warren, town administrator. Dan Pelota, uh, project manager. Philip O'Brien, architect. Nancy Maynard, library trustee. Candace Bradbury Carlin. Second. Uh, by our, our uh, bylaws, non voters, non town residents are not allowed to speak at town meetings, so this uh, motion allows them to speak uh, and they would have information to share with you for your deliberation. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. I move the moderator in his sole discretion may move the order of the articles to be delivered, deliberated upon this evening. Second. 
Uh, the select board selects the articles in the order they are to be voted on this evening. Uh, there are some substantial articles that are all important, but if it does get to be too late, uh, I would like to reserve yeah, the right to move the certain motions up so that we can have a uh, fair discussion and vote. Room, All those in favor of that? Opposed? Motion carried. And with that, Article 1, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town transfer $50,000 for engineering services for the Leary Lot Development Project and $10,000 for planning board technical assistance from free cash to the contracted services appropriation as a one-time uh, transaction for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Mr. McKenna, can you just briefly summarize? Sure. The uh, request that the town transfer um, engineering, so this is really what we're doing is a, a one-time appropriation of 50000 for engineering services for the Leary Lot development, which is the parking lot downtown that we'd like to develop. Um, and then we have appropriated our funding to, to pay for that project, but um, to, if, we, if we use our, our funds instead of ARPA funds, we can forego a lot of um, hoops from the federal government as far as the engineering goes. So that's really just a transfer of funds to do that work. And then $10,000 for uh, planning board technical assistance. There's a lot of work going on, and, and we'll need some technical assistance to the planning board. Are there any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Ms. Shores, and that's Article 2. I move that the town transfer $5,000 from free cash to be added to the select board staff salary appropriation for additional support staff for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022. Second. Ms. Shores, that's? We have a lot of activity um, happening in our select board office, and we also are transitioning to new staff. So this is covering a potential uh, shortfall. If we don't need the money, we'll return it to free cash. I ask committee, if you have any comments during the meeting, one of you can just raise your hands, otherwise we'll go with your recommendation as shown in the guide. Uh, all those in favor? Or any questions, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the section of the far right um, is reserved for non-voters, so um, I'm seeing some hand raises. If the possibility you can sneak over to the uh, other two sides, appreciate it. Or at least get closer to the aisle. There's just a couple of you. Article three, Mr. Hilchey. First, if you can't if you can't hear me speaking, just let me know. Uh, I move that the town transfer $20,000 in free cash to pay accrued fees and interest for unemployment claims to the Department of Unemployment Assistance for prior and current fiscal years. Second. Mr. Hilchey, briefly. Uh, through uh, various uh, accounting issues, we've uh, uncovered that some uh, unemployment uh, bills are due and include interest. So we're asking for 20000 even though it's slightly higher than what we actually know about, so that we can pay off this whole bill and stop paying interest. Are there any questions on that? All those in favor? Opposed? Passes by unanimity. Article 4, Mr. McDaniel. Um, this will be a slight change from what you have printed out. I move that the town transfer $10,000 from free cash for the tuition and transportation expenses of students to the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022. Second. Mr. McDaniel, briefly. So um, we, we, these, these are always costs that you're never really sure about how many kids are going to go. And we, we have, we were under, when we set this part up, we were under the impression that we had another child going. They, they did go and then they left. Um, so really, the 10000 is really covering the, the shortfall of transportation and student expenses. Are there any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Article 5, Ms. Shores now. I move that the town transfer $30,000 free, free cash for the town's 350th anniversary celebration for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022. Second. Ms. Shores, that's 
We still have the original budget from 2019 of about $100,000. Deerfield, friends of Deerfield are continuing to raise money. It's just a tiny thing and a safety net. This is based on the experience of Conway, Sunderland, Whaley, and Hatfield and their celebrations. It's important that we have the ability to put down deposits for bands and fireworks and that kind of thing. And that all happens in the first quarter of of this, uh, this winter time, um, you know, of the year. And so um, we're just a little worried that we <laughs> might not have as much cash as we have, uh, anticipated. The gala of Jubilee event was supposed to be a moneymaker that's going to end up being Go on more or less a great event. So it's really important to have the ability to put down deposits. So I don't anticipate using this money, but just in case. I would appreciate the support for our television. Any questions? The thing. All those in favor? The projector needs to Opposed. be halfway up the, the, the aisle. The motion carries. Um, I'm going to, the third section, uh, if you're a voter, as long as you keep your green card up when you vote, just feel free to take a seat over there. Um, no one should have to stand. There's some seats down front as well. But So that third section is usually reserved for non-voters, but make yourself comfortable there if you're looking to set. Article 6, Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town transfer $40,000 from the fiscal year 2023 sewer wastewater enterprise fund certified to pay earnings for a vehicle to be used for sewer and wastewater treatment department activities. Second. Mr. Hilchey. So, um, due to some decommissioning of outdated uh, trucks and also uh, it's now requiring sewer uh, employees to use their personal vehicles to drive to do maintenance work at that sewer plant. And uh, we feel that the board health this is a health issue because it's possible that these folks would be bringing home uh, possible path, car speed, not car speed, but infectious vectors. So uh, for a public safety reason, we think this is a logical appropriation. And it's coming from the enterprise fund, so it's not, if I'm, if I'm correct, am I correct that this is not coming from taxes? So. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Article 7, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town transfer $150,000 from capital stabilization for repairs to the South Deerfield Congregational Church building. Second. Mr. McDaniel. So, um, if, if people remember, we, we have uh, put some money aside for, for the church renovations um, to kind of turn it into a space that we can bring, use and bring it up to ADA compliance. Um, and, and in evaluating the building some more, um, we have found a, a broken truss in the roof and that the steeple is leaning and that the, the floor in the main sanctuary needs to be supported. Um, so we're hoping to set some money aside to do that. I think the, the initial, um, after many meetings, the initial interest is not to take the building down. So we're either going to take it down completely or we're going to remodel it. And so if we're going to remodel it, it sounds like everybody, all the different meetings in the boards want to keep the building and, and make it useful for the town again if we need to make it safe and secure, secure the roof structure, the floor structure, and the steeple. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries by two-thirds. Article 8, Mr. Ness. I move that the town pass over this article. It is now being covered by the grant. Uh, to be clear, you're asking no action be taken on, correct? Thank you. All, uh, any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried over. Pass. Pass over. Excuse me. Article 9, Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town rescind the unused borrowing authority of $100,000 for the installation of a clarifier. Article 1 has voted at special town meeting in Mar on March 11, 2019. Second. Mr. Hilchey? Um, this is basically uh, asking us not to spend $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? 
questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Article 10, Ms. Short's now. I move that the town, pursuant to general law, chapter 150E, section 7, appropriate $45,094. Sufficient and included in the OMNAS budget to fund the collective bargaining agreement with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IEPA, AFL CIO, as included, and appropriate $18,401, $10,000 of which was included in the OMNAS budget, and transfer $8,401 from free cash to fund the collective bargaining agreement with the United Public Service Employees Union. Local 424M, MAPID 115 for the fiscal year 2023. Second. Ms. Um What happened is the, the police contract wasn't presented um, before we voted on the, it was ratified, but we weren't, ha didn't have it before our town meeting voted. So we have to re vote that uh, portion that was in the omnibus budget already. And we have put in 10000 towards the highway um, contract, but we need an additional $8,401 uh, $8, to um, settle that contract. And that has been ratified and it's been presented. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by simple majority. Um, again, if anyone's standing in the back, you can feel free to sit on that third, third row if that's what you'd like to do. Count you there. Um, Article 11, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town approve the local incentive application of Newpro LLC and their affiliates and vote to authorize the select board to submit an application designating the uh, property located on tax parcel ID map 168-21. <laughs> consisting of approximately 7.971 acres, more or less, shown as parcel 2-1 on the attached subdivision, subdivided site plan, the plan, and, and recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds in Plan Book 138, page 7, dated October 21st, 2020, as an economic opportunity area to the Massachusetts Office of Business Development, pursuant to the provisions of general uh, general law chapter 23a and further to authorize the select board to enter into a tax um, increment financing agreement um, and tax incentive uh, increment financing plan with new pro llc and affiliates pursuant to the provisions of general law chapter 40 section 59 in connection with the development of said property and to authorize the select board to take such action as is necessary to obtain approval of the local incentive application and no. to implement the tax increment this financing this agreement and tax increment financing plan. Water pressure over here, the town. Mr. McDaniel, what the heck does that all mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means we're getting a, uh, we're getting a, a large, uh, wonderful business coming to town of Deerfield to do manufacturing. Uh, this is the yeah. this is the parcel left in the um, the old pickle factory. We've got our town highway garage there. Last couple of years, we uh, pilot precision manufacturing went in with excellent paying manufacturing jobs. We now have the opportunity um, and have sold the parcel to, to New Pro LLC, which is a urethane um, urethane production, and they, they they manufacture urethane that goes in all kinds of medical equipment and other things. So really, this is incent incentivizing them to come to Deerfield, build uh, build their twenty eight million dollar building, outfit it hire hopefully up to 80, 80 jobs by 2028. And really what this does is it, it puts in motion the large uh, help that they get from the state. So the town always has to do a, a, an amount and then the state takes over and helps them as well. So um, it's one step to helping them get, get on their feet and get building in, in Deerfield. Um, that covers it. Yeah, let's take the question on the back. Can you sit down with a microphone? Down to the if you can, yes, please. Uh, I can talk pretty loud. No. It speaks how loud, so it's just, if you can use the mic, it's great. Thank you. If you can just state your name and your yep. street. Your I'm street. right there. I'm there. Yes, Rich, Rich Soita. Uh, you haven't.
told us anything about the amount of money it's going to get, we're going to get for it, what the cost is, what kind of tax breaks we're giving them, well, you know, what are we getting for? Yeah. Again, we're getting a twenty-eight million dollar building with hopefully that? eighty jobs in the town. Yeah. Um, the way the tax, if, if you look in your guide, there's a there's a chart to talk about how the taxes work. Um, so the way that the uh, exemption in the first year is a seventy percent exemption, which is a time when generally not much is in the ground and not much is working yet. Um, by 2025, it's 60. 2026, it goes down to 50. 27, it's 40. 30, 20, 20, 20, 20, to finish out until 2023. So um, it's giving up, you know, most of the project um, towards the end, you're giving up 20% of your taxes on that parcel, uh, on that business to, to gain those jobs and that manufacturing there. Trevor Dan uh, Daniels, right? Yes. What are we getting for 7.91 acres of prime industrial property? Oh, how much have we sold the property yeah. for? I think it went for 500,000, I think, between the two. Or three something, was it 327? It sold last year. Can we oh. have a clarification on that? I mean, how much have we sold? $327,000 for almost eight acres is nothing. I mean, building lot count is $125,000. Yeah, so we, we sold it to, to, to um, the sale. Do you have a figure? Do I have a figure? Do we have an actual figure? I, I don't at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know an exact figure, but I think it was about 410000 It was over 400000 but barely over. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, you can just come down to the microphone. If you have a question, you can already come down to the microphone. I'll recognize you when it's time. Hearing more, Mayor Street, you said that we, we sold the property last year. So it seems that it was a foregone conclusion that we are going to pass this. And I also noticed that there's already been a cyclone fence put up all around that property. Another, just another sign to me that it seems like this was a foregone conclusion. Ms. McDaniel, would you like to respond? It's a foregone conclusion that they're coming to Deerfield. Um, we hope uh, they could always decide if they don't get this tax incentive, if it's not advantageous to them to build here. I mean, the whole part of this part of the sale was negotiating a TIP agreement. There was a committee put together, and a TIP is the tax incentive agreement. There was a committee put together to, to talk about that, and they negotiated for a couple of months on coming up with a plan that would work. No, um, the way that okay. we need so to do this is then present it to the uh, state board. No, the state board heard us, heard New Pro, permission approval the until it passes the town meeting. The town meeting, the town residents have to we approve that tax and the proposal. The proposal. And then the if, uh, if it passes, then they will hopefully go ahead and build. And again, it triggers the state state help for that as well. So we're, so we're voting just on the tax incentive. That's correct. And, and they have passed an EPA? Yes. So with all the wetlands in there? there? There's no wetlands in there. There's wetlands in the back, but yes, all that has been done. They've done all the environmental work already. Okay, Everything's thank you. Completed. Yep. Attorney B, do you wish to speak? Or? No, I, don't, I oh. think Trevor answered the question. Thank you, Mike. Hello, I'm William Walburn, uh, River Road. Just, uh, are you able to clarify what the actual dollar cost is to the taxpayers in Deerfield for the loss in revenue for discounting the tax, um, the, the tax incentive to the to the uh, to the business? Well, yeah. Again, right now we're not getting anything, so it's. Not, we're not collecting any tax, but, but yes, when it goes on, I don't have that figure up with me, but yeah. as opposed to if another business were to come in, build a $28 million building, right. and have no tax incentive, yep. what, how much revenue would the town receive from that versus what we will actually receive with all the discounts? Attorney Meek, so if, if the front table, the, the same rules apply if anyone else is sitting out there, so if you'd like to speak, just raise your hand. 
to acknowledge that we don't want to have a back and forth going because we have a lot to do tonight. So, Attorney Miguel, something? So they can't give you the exact numbers yet because it's, it's reassessed at the time the construction happens. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is this is the second buyer of this property. Mm -hmm. The first buyer went away. He moved. And so the town got the property back and then resold it again. So I don't know that there's a line out there um, of people wanting to build a $28 million facility. But the, so the actual number can't be calculated. I'm not sure what the assessors put in their value, but the, the percentage of discount is what's represented in the town meeting warrant based upon the uh, purchase price and construction of $16 million and $20 million um, for the facility itself. So at the end of the day, it will be assessed at some value in that regular tax rate that everyone else will be paying will be discounted down by the percentage, is that correct? That's correct. So there's not an exact figure to give you, it sounds like, but that's how you do the math. Not very acceptable to have such vague information, but thank you. Yes, Mark Donovan, uh, 34 South Main Street. Uh, I live with the brook behind, and uh, it seems to me that that's wetlands, number one. Number two, seems like you sold the land off for short money. But also, this is a plastics company. And in this day and age of environmental concerns, I'm very concerned that you're putting a giant $28 million plastics company right in my backyard. Also, they're a 24 hour a day business. What's the deal with the trucking? When's it going to be coming and going? Is there going to be any mitigation or any thought to any of that? Thank you. Mr. Hilchey? So, um, just informationally, um, the, the Select Board and the Conservation Commission have currently put out the site plan review and the notice of intent to work with your wetlands. Yeah for peer review, which means that an engineering firm will be looking at the site plan and, and uh, a wetlands consultant will be reviewing um, the claims that the uh, builder, the, the applicant has made. And those hearings will be going on um, as soon as the peer review uh, consultant has completed their job. So I would encourage people to turn out and just definitely pay attention to the project as it's been presented to us um, this facility has gets high high importance for the uh, urethane films they make to be very pure. They have represented that this, this facility will be like a clean room for a microchip processing plant and that they're very concerned and, and careful about uh, not releasing any uh, chemicals into the air. Again, the peer review will, will be giving you a select board and the cons kind of advice about those questions. So please turn that up. Mr. McDaniel, do you have any else to add? Thank you. Sure. Kevin Thompson, 12, Deer, uh, 12 South Street, or Air Street, sorry. Uh, when we put in the DPW, it's 10 feet short. They never put the trees in that were supposed to go in. How do we know that when this plant gets built, that we're not going to see the same problems, that we're not going to have a chemical spill in here? If there's a chemical spill, is this going to affect the property value? Because right now, I'm feeling like I didn't know about this until about three weeks ago. My fault, I'm not always here, but I did not receive any letter. Some of my neighbors received a letter, but I, and I'm right on the corner of the back lot, so I'm, I'm concerned about that. So. Anyone like to respond, Mr. McDaniel? Just, yeah, all of those concerns, please come to the expedited for the, you know, the site plan reviews we're doing. Yeah, 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 please do. Please do. All that to be addressed. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Raina Hiddleston. I'm on Elm Circle. And I just, um, I think there's a little bit of confusion about what plastic manufacturing means in this case. Um, they do not manufacture the polyurethane on site. They get the polyurethane from elsewhere in pellet form. They take that polyurethane, they heat it up, 
and then they mold it into thin film. So it's not a manufacturing or chemical processing plant like we all kind of have in our head with uh, smokestacks and chemicals and big vats and things like that. It's not that type of facility. So I just, you know, I'm not saying that there's zero <laughs> concerns about waste or environment or anything like that. I just want to make it clear that it's not that type of chemical plant. And I don't know if the um, select board has anything to say about that. Any other questions? Yes. There's another question coming up. My name's Dave Wolf from South Main Street. Two things I'd like to clarify. One, the for the purchase of this property, the bid it was a RFP that went out requesting bids for the property. The ones that bought the two parcels were the highest bidders. And that's why they were awarded that contract for that property. When it comes to the TIF, the TIF is almost identical to the one that we gave to New England Bakery that the town meeting approved. So there's not a big difference there either. As to the process uh, spoken to, the polyurethane process is a lot different than the uh, uh, plastic process. We have one of the largest plastic producing plants in Massachusetts at Deerfield Plastics. Yes, had that had a number of things that came out. This urethane is a sealed process because it's medical mm -hmm. grade mostly. If it's not medical, it's going into glass. <coughs> and it's bonded between two pieces of glass for safety glass. The other thing is a military ap application. I spent 40 years in the plastics industry in the urethane industry, so I know a lot about it. No chemicals spills there. The only thing that can get out in that process would be some of the pellets. Thank you. Sir. Uh, from St. Peter's, um, Dave kind of touched on what I was going to do. I just want to reiterate the fact that many businesses coming to this town have been offered the same tip. The select board has done a very good job of vetting the project. They have posted the meetings and everything else. Based on that situation, the discussion that's going on here would also like to move forward. Second. Um, yeah, there's been a, a motion to, to move the vote, so at this point we have to stop the debate. All those in favor of moving the question? All those opposed? That carries by the two-thirds required. At this point, we will vote. All those in favor of the article as presented? All those opposed? That motion carries. Article 12, Mr. Hilchey. I move that the town change the use of the land identified in the assessor's records as map 168 and lot 128 located at 159 North Main Street, South Deerfield, including approximately 5,692 square feet, more or less, identified on an unrecorded site plan prepared for Hanshaw Lumber in the town of Deerfield by Harold L. Eaton and Associates and dated August 9, 2022. To land for disposition and therefore thereafter authorize the select board to convey, sell, or otherwise dispose of the same, and to authorize the select board to enter into and negotiate all necessary documents subject to such restrictions and limitations as the select, select board deems appropriate in order to effectuate the disposition of said parcel. Second, second. Mr. Hilton. <clears throat> so, as part of um, the plan to develop the Leary Lodge parking, yeah, um, the town has been working with Hanshaw Lumber on an idea to exchange pieces of land so that uh, we could create a one-way <laughs> traffic pattern through the Leary Lodge that would come in on, off North Main Street and then exit onto Elm Street. The land swap would also benefit Hanshaw Lumber because they are looking to build, I believe, like an 11,900 square foot addition onto their existing property, and uh, which would be a, 
a fair amount of tax benefits to the town. Uh, and the appraisal came in very much in favor of the town. The next article that Trevor will be talking about is the secondary piece of this, which describes the land that the town wishes to acquire. Is it possible just to advance the slides to the map? Yeah. Can you explain maybe with the map just to leave? Yes, so let me pick this up. You, you'll notice that there's a, a thin strip, a long thin strip that's at the bottom of the map. And that's the parcel that the town seeks to acquire so that we can have a 25 foot, um, 25 foot access road from the Leary lot to Elm Street. The, the other piece, the slightly larger piece, but because it's landlocked, it's been deemed less valuable. So that land would, would uh, be, under, our, under this proposal, that land would be able to be swapped or sold or otherwise disposed of to handshell lumber, and that would be where they would also put part of the expansion of the new facility they want to build. So the town would give up parcel A, get parcel B, is that? Yeah. So parcel A is the square, and parcel B is the rectangle. Yeah, we want parcel B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so this article is, is on parcel B? Or dispose of parcel A, I'm sorry. Yeah. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by two thirds. Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town purchase, take, or otherwise acquire the parcel of land identified as Hamshaws as part of the article identified in the assessor's records as Map 168, Lot 121, located at 14 Elm Street, including approximately 3,958 square feet, more or less identified on an unrecorded site plan prepared for Hamshaw Lumber and the Town of Deerfield by Harold L. Eaton and Associates and dated August 9, 2022, and paid for said request appropriate sum of money and or authorize the exchange of real property similarly situated and further to authorize the select board to enter into any and all agreements necessary to effectuate and, and said acquisition. So again, this is just the, the second part is allowing us to, uh, to uh, acquire that, that skinny piece of land. <laughs> Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by two thirds. Article 14, a short enough. I move that the town authorize the select board to submit the following home rule petition as presented in the town meeting guide. Oh. Okay. Second. Again, this is fairly lengthy, so the town meeting guy would have the actual language you're voting on. Ms. Shores, that's what you'd like to summarize? This is so we can keep experienced good police officers. Um, with the new police reform bill, it's hard uh, to keep our staffing um, adequate, so this is, allows us to have some extra additional years with experienced officers. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Article 15, Mr. Hilchi. I move that the town authorize the select board to submit a home rule petition by which to amend chapter 343 of the Acts of 1935 as presented in the town meeting guide. Again, this is lengthy, so the town meeting guide would have the actual language you'd be voting on. Second. Thank you. Mr. LG? Um, so this, the uh, first, uh, Article 15 is the first of three articles that relate to the sewer bylaws and, and regulations of the town. This article um, corrects some of the language to update it from 1935 when it was passed. Things like changing Board of Selectmen to Select Board. And um, so the other... Any questions? Please come down to the microphone. All right, I move that Article 15 be passed over its entirety at this time. Uh, 
for St. Peter's? Do you have any comments? Yes, I do. This article is targeted at the not for profits and tax exempt entities in this town, which I totally understand. However, uh, the town has been negotiating with the uh, not for profit and tax exempt properties about the old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Introduction of this art article to town meeting has upset those entities to the point that any future additional donations from them will cease probably permanently. They're not obligated to make even a one dollar contribution. So as minimal as they do contribute, it is still something. They have uh, put up the uh, mass building. Uh, they actually last year they contributed over five hundred thousand dollars in the sewer things. All that will probably stop. They are angry because this was done uh, specifically targeting them. Other non-monetary contribution or do they allow the use of recreational facilities, supported Deerfield Fire District, uh, they helped the building and many prepared folk donations for various town events and many repairs to the town offices and other uh, municipal buildings. Passage of this article also would also obligate users to pay up to 99% of any expansion improvements, even though any such expansion would increase the taxable value of real estate and create a revenue stream for the town of Deerfield by business and brand industry. Any town vote could be amended to reduce the town's portion to almost zero, even though the town would be, uh, would get a, 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 a revenue stream. And a prime example would be Yankee Candle. They could never have built there had it not been for sewer because that's swamp. That has brought back to the town hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax revenue, in employment, uh, and recognition for the town. The issue about nonprofits and sewer repairs was addressed in 2017 through the then sewer committee. The issue, that issue was just kicked down the road until now, so it's now an emergency and has to be done at a special meeting according to the sponsors. I believe this should be passed over until the next annual town meeting so that negotiations continue until then and hopefully bring a mutual, mutually beneficial agreement between all parties. Thank you. Any questions on Mr. St. Peter's uh, motion to pass over? So again, just so everyone follows, or the uh, select board have put forth the original motion. Mr. St. Peter's has made a motion essentially to lay that entire question on the table and not to pass over at this point. Uh, so if you were to pass over, no action would be taken on the article. In order for that to be successful, there would need to be a two-thirds majority. Looks like we have a question. Can you state your name in your street? Yes, David Potter, Eastern Ave. Uh, my question is, I don't, uh, I don't understand if you could explain how does this here target the not-for-profit or non-profit sector? The, what, is it, what does it target them for? Mr. St. Peter? Uh, the uh, way it's, it is set up right now, the town pays 25% of any uh, capital project, or one-fourth, and the um, users pay 75%. The town derives its revenue of 25% through taxation. The not-for-profits and tax, and, and tax exempt are self-explanatory. They are not taxable, so therefore they do not contribute to this 25%. In the past, as I said, they have contributed Maybe not as much as they were, would you know, under a taxable situation, but there is a certain amount of goodwill and other no. things that they have done on a non monetary basis. No, I don't know. Thank you. But well, I, I still don't understand. Um, it sounds to me like you're saying that 16. they wouldn't be contributing to this 25% through taxes, right? The town is responsible for 25% and they raise that 25% through taxes, which these entities don't pay. Which they, they never have for any construction that's going on. And now, how does this make them pay? By eliminating that minimum 25% of one-fourth uh, contribution by the town, okay? But that also means uh, if any Thing other than the old Deerfield plant, such as any expansion in this town, it would be brought before town amendment, and if the select board or sewer commissioners decided that they want uh, that it brought a 10% contribution to the town, 
that can be brought to the floor. I could stand up and amend that on the floor and say, I only believe I want to pay one penny towards, uh, the town should only pay one penny towards this, in which case the users uh, would be set with 100% uh, of that and there would be no contribution either again. Even if the town uh, receives a revenue stream by enhanced tax uh, property values and or any business that would move in and tie into that sewer system. Thank you. Yes, Erica Ross, Grand Crossing. Um, I just wanted to clarify because I was at the previous meetings of the select board and I've been listening in on the finance board, so I've been listening in on this issue quite a bit. Um, I think it's very important that we pass it today, not kick it down the road to town meeting, because when we have this sewer bylaw changed, we have some, any um, leverage in going forward in negotiations. I think negotiations are absolutely one, what we want to do with the private schools who have tax exempt status. We should not be calling them nonprofits, they are private schools with tax exempt status, to be clear. And in order to negotiate with them successfully, they have all the, they have all the chips. We now will have some chips because we will be able to say our town does not have to pay a minimum percentage of a sewer system that is being 96% used by private schools with tax exempt status. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Director, if you can speak really loud. I think that what I want to call everybody's attention to the fact that someday Mill River area is going to have to be sewered, and it should be sewered. The no, it is room by the 10 needs to be sewered so that no, we can no, cover the businesses that we have. Uh, and I think it's short sighted to pass anything to do with this. You can talk about the next time it comes to do it, but there will be betterment charges made when, when you go up to the Mill River to service those homes. Because most of those homes were built 50 years ago. The septic systems are, are, are failing in a number of places. And group 5 and 10 needs to be done. The sewer map does not show uh, the whole of 5 and 10 from the uh, in the North Main Street up as being included in the district. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's short sighted uh, to uh, yeah. make any changes in the, zone, in the sewer method of payment at this time because when it comes time to put the sewers in the middle of the village, or out, out there in Mill River, you know, it's going to cost money. If you put it all on the rate payers, they're not going to vote for it because it can't sustain the cost. So anyway, I, my point is, I don't think we should be doing anything with the formula at this point. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Uh, uh, you have to refer to Mr. Hilch. Okay, yeah, really, like, yeah, yeah. Um, first, I'd like to say that I don't think of any of these three um, articles tonight as targeting any sector of the town. Um, I look at it as protecting both sewer users and private septic users because I'm going to give a thought experiment. Uh, right now, we're, in, we're involved with a $20 million um, project, to, or $22 million project to upgrade the South Yarbrough wastewater treatment plant. Um, I think 3.7% of tax paying sewer users live and use the old year for the wastewater treatment plant. That means that 97% of septic system users and sewer users are basically in South Deerfield area and they, they are paying for the South Deerfield plant. If we don't change anything tonight, that means that if and when we have to fix this whole year of land, and there's no, no determination on when we need to start, it would be better for all parties to start sooner rather than later, but this plant might work fine for the next five or ten years. But if we, if we leave the, the rules in place that exist now, if you're a sewer, sewer user, you can imagine that if your rates are high now, they're going to double when we fix the other plant. And so septic system users will be in a less onerous position because we're only required to pay contribute to the 25% town tax rate. So uh, really it's to protect the residents. 
It's not to target anyone else. Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, just your name, your street. Oh, thank you. My name is David Lawless. I live on Sugar Lake Street. My question is is whether Chapter 343 of the Acts of 1935 relates solely to the old Deerfield. So this is this has general application within the town. So my question then is, let's say if in 10 years something goes wrong with the South Deerfield plan. Does this limit the town's contribution to 25%, a maximum of 25%? And then the ratepayers pick up the rest uh, by default. So now the ratepayers are, are paying 75% of any further work that's done on the system. And is that more than the rate, is that rate really higher than what the ratepayers um, are paying today? Mr. McCann, I, I think if I understand your question, um, so. And, and to make this clear, anything that we've done in the South Deerfield area right now is staying the same. It's a, it was done under, passed under when we had the split of 25% from the general fund, 75% from the sewer users. Um, what this takes away is any ability for the town to, possibly any way for the town to, to manage anything. So going forward, it's up to the town's folks to see if they want to pay anything towards any sewer project in any part of the town going forward. So, but right now, the town's contribution is between 25% and 60-some-odd percent. Cool. And this is going to cap the town's contribution at 25%. Correct. So how is that not going to harm private rate payers in the future? There, there are going to be sewer projects in South Deerfield and elsewhere in the town in the future. I, I understand that Mr. Hilchey says that there could be a negative impact, you know, when we stay focused on old Deerfield and they, this unnamed, you know, untaxed organization. Um, but it seems to be that there could be a broader harm for the ratepayers going forward. Yes, there could be. I mean, generally, because it's really up to everybody in town, and most people are not on, not, they're most people on septic. So, Probably going to Generally, don't want to raise their bill. I first. Oh, I'm sorry. I just would speak okay. without asking. I would just personally on this. I've been working on the sewer for a long time. I do think, and, and the way we passed the 19 million dollar appropriation before is that there is some participation. I think more that, that the general fund has because it allows us a smaller, dense community. It allows us, you know, industry that comes in. So I think there is some buy-in. I don't know if the number needs to be at 25%. Um, and I'm happy that, you know, before, when we were negotiating this, it was going to be like just get rid of it completely. But um, we, we had negotiated at least, you know, capping it at 25. I, I still think there is some participation in the town people should have. And then it's up to us to really kind of make that case down the road. So it could stay at 25% at the general public feels it and still feels obligated to, to participate in, in a project like that, but it doesn't have to. And precedent's kind of set that they generally wouldn't cover it. Mr. Elgy. So yes, just a little background on how we arrived at the 25% number. Originally when this was proposed, we were going to take out the lower end requirement and also take out the higher end 66%. And the thinking was, as you described, that um, there could be a case in which the town is trying to expand the um, partially down flag of town, and it, it's really a town project. Um, I'm not certain um, that there's no way around that under the, under the current situation, but it was felt, and we heard feedback from, from people who attended the meetings to talk about this, that they wanted some sort of, some sort of number that was uh, understandable to them. Uh, and so we settled on 25% because that's the, that's the lower end of the requirement. Um, was that the right thing to do? I, I think that the reason why people wanted a percentage was because they said some future sewer commissioners might come in with a plan that would require <coughs> us to pay 66% of a project when there's really only 20% town benefit. But, but as I said at the outset, the first words in Section 5 are, the town shall vote. And I, I believe that the sewer, the townspeople recognized that we have schools, fire department, police department, uh, highway department, uh, all things that are general benefits to the town. And I think everybody is perfectly happy paying for 
25% of the sewer project because that makes this all possible. Uh, the, the, the situation where a specific benefit to a small section of town is a different consideration, but I certainly understand your reasoning and thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, and I'll, I'll note you can't have big, beautiful urethane plants without a sewer system. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments before we go back to Mr. St. Peter's? <coughs> Sir. Okay, uh, just a little background. In, uh, when the acts were passed in 1935, uh, one, and even at that point in time when it was legislated, the, the town had to uh, ratify that. And even in 1935, one third of the voters voted against ratifying that. Even with the realization that there is some benefit to the town for its growth and everything else. When Chapter 150 was voted on in 2007, I believe, it was a vote uh, uh, requiring all payments to be made 100% by the users. In 2007, that was relatively new, the population had grown, supposedly we became more intelligent as to what um, benefits a town did get, and I, Yankee Candle is my prime example. And at that point in town, uh, the majority of townspeople that voted, voted against the user at that point in time. Is 25%. I do not have an issue with, uh, with cap under 25%. My issue is that I could get up on the floor by town vote, as you just mentioned, Mr. Hilke, and amend that uh, portion that the town would be responsible down to one penny. That is the problem, is there is no bottom assurance that the town is going to help out, even though it is creating a revenue stream for the town. Uh, just to understand where we're at, um, so um, Mr. St. Peter's has made a motion uh, that the article be passed over. So right now you would be voting on whether to pass over the article. I mean, so you're not voting to approve it or disapprove it, you're voting to take no action on it essentially. Um, so in order to do that, uh, it would require a two-thirds majority. If that motion is not successful, we're going to go back to the motion, uh, and at that point, you would vote on whether you wanted to pass the article or not. So, does anyone have any questions on the process? So all those in favor of the motion to uh, pass over Article 15 in its entirety, and just keep your cards up because I may have to pass. So all those in favor? Oh, I thought it was 16. To pass over. I thought it was 16. That's what the woman told me. Sorry. You're all set over here. says the town shall pay not less than 25 percent. Striking that means that the select board or town meeting vote can turn around and say, and this is according to two different sure, towns, to lawyer articles that were written by the town attorney, Lisa Mead. One article says the town could strike anything, and the second article says no, there's an act, there's an act of 1935. In 1935, when they passed that law, part of the board of health regulation was, and this is state regulation, 
that the town must pay, must pay not less than 25%. So by capping this at 25%, that's fine for the upper limit. But the lower limit can be reduced according to Attorney Meade's letter to 1%, which means you're gonna divert 24% and say, hooray for me and to hell with you because you're on the sewer. That's not fair. I want to tell you a little bit more about the 1935 law. It also required a second vote. The second vote was a, a separate vote which required a determination of exactly how much the percentage would be between 25% to one quarter and the two thirds. Since then, the town has changed. What happened was we've allowed the town to grow. We've allowed smaller lots because of the sewer. We've allowed two family units to go into single family housing because of the sewer. We've allowed all that. Because of that, we allowed the business community, the industrial and the commercial to grow in the town of Deerfield. Guess what? We stole a couple of big businesses out of Greenfield. We stole Channing Beat and we stole the uh, tool maker. Millis Falls too. Now we have money that's coming in from the industrial complex that we have out there. We have, for example, Yankee Candle contributed according to the record that I got from the assessor's office as of uh, last week, $508,000 income. Guess what? We're going to have a million dollar bond payment every year for 40 years. And a million dollar bond payment for 40 years with 965 users means you're going to pay a lot of bucks. The town's portion of that is about a quarter of a million. And if we don't keep that minimum in there of 25%, then what happens is they can divert it and say, no, I want to pay it this year. Therefore, you sewer users have to pay that 25%. And to me, that is not right, that is not fair. Second part of my discussion is going to be about the business community. Ten years ago, we used to have 26 to 28 percent of our taxes derived from the business community, from commercial and industrial. Now we have less than 20 percent. I've been saying for years that we have to allow our business to grow with the town. The businesses that grow with the town are like the golden goose. They give you money, but they got no say in this town meeting. Unless they're a resident, they have no say. And we should allow business to grow as long as it's good, clean business. The 25% is fair for the town, 75% is fair for the user. What's that mean? What's it really gonna cost you? Well, I can tell you what's gonna cost you. You're talking, without a minimum of 25%, the town's going to have to turn around, and if they pass that off to the sewer users, it's going to be over $1,000 a year, principal and interest for 40 years. That's $40,000, principal and interest for 40 years. To me, I think that we have learned to become civilized and help each other. Well, guess what? The sewer users in South Deerfield are paying, like Tim said, 97% of the bill. That's fine that we're paying 97%. But let's have a little bit of consideration for the fact that we bring in millions of dollars for our industry in our town, and we can use a quarter of a million out of that $1 million payment. That's what I'm asking for. Mr. Chorp, let's wrap it up if you can. I appreciate it. I'm on my last day of work. Thank you. Because <laughs> I knew you were going to allow me two and a half minutes. <laughs> The town made a promise in 1935. The promise was, do not, you must pay a minimum of 25%. They want to cross that off. To me, that is not fair. Now, I'll tell you, I know Lisa Mead, and I know the legalese in this is probably correct. But morally, it's not correct. Morally, this is indefensible where you say, I don't want to pay nothing because I pay for my own septic system. I've heard that story over and over and over for the last 20 years. So you have a choice for your vote today. A yes vote 
for all the nonsense we were just say, hooray for me and to hell with you. That's the message you're giving. A yes vote. A no vote is leave the article the way it is. The 1935 article stands as it is. If you want to change anything, you change the maximum fee you can charge for a penalty from $20 a day to whatever you want. But to me, this is fair and equitable now. The 1935 law was passed in 35. I wasn't around to see it, but guess what? It's still appropriate. And you know something? For 18 years I was a selectman, I never even knew this article existed. Because you know something? They never passed it on from select board to select board. So now that we know this is a law, it's fair for the town who are on the sewer to pay 75%. And it's fair for the town to own up to what they do own, which is 25%. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilchi, did you hear? I just wanted to um, say that uh, thank you, Mr. Pichard, for those thoughts. I wanted to um, add a few points. One, I think I have a tremendous amount of respect for the voters of the town of Deerfield. And I think when you bring up an article before the town, they, they say, oh, there is a benefit to me directly, even though I'm a septic system user. I don't believe we as neighbors are dollars and cents exclusive. So that's my first comment. The second comment is that I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who knows, that Channing beat Yankee Candle tied into the sewer system at their own expense when they built their facilities. So the idea that businesses won't come here if they can't have a pre-existing sewer line, I don't think is accurate. And finally, there is a company that wants to come to town uh, and build across from the Yankee uh, the Channing Beat Company, and they're already committed to building their own sewer connection. So I think perhaps organically, we're going to achieve a sewer line going down to uh, Route 5 and 10 to where it makes sense. Uh, a lot of the property in the, low, in the northern end of town is just too wet, it's too many wetlands, and there's never going to be any business developed off of uh, Route 5 in that area. So um, that's just my thought. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. I noticed that, um, somewhat unusually, the Finance Committee actually approved this warrant article. <laughs> um, and I would really appreciate hearing from the Finance Committee on their reasoning on this. Thank you. Would somebody from the committee like to comment? Um, Like many things, this was not a unanimous decision. The uh, argument that prevailed was that the, this rule allows more flexible financing possibilities for the future. Um, oh. We did support, like, if there was going to be no minimum, we requested that the maximum be at least 25% to remove any confusion over the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant project. Um, does somebody, anybody else have a comment on the deliberations that we have on this? Do you have notes? Yeah, it was two meetings ago. Um, no, like it, was, it was just Friday night. This one was just Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it all blurs. <laughs> it was Article 15 that was two meetings ago. So this one was. Mr. Okay. Upton, do you want to make a comment? Well, and then we'll come back to the Finance Committee. Yes, uh, Jeff Upton, Bill Press Ave, and I am on a septic uh, system. I am not a sewer user. But uh, with the language, when I read this, there's a few red flags. And I agree with John and Bruce and several other people in this room. Even though I'm a septic user, I feel that I do have a little bit of responsibility to some of the other issues or services or facilities that are provided to this town. So, you know, right now it's a 25-75 split. Even though I have my own costs with my septic system, pumping it twice a year, which keeps increasing, 
and also a replacement cost down the road at some point in time, I am going to uh, have some substantial uh, costs myself. But what I was concerned about was, as the wording reads there, up to the 66 or two-thirds percent. And I just didn't feel it was right to have septic system users exposed to that or the possibility of that. And that was, that was my concern because a lot of septic system users will never have access to the sewer system in their lifetime. So I understand the situation. I'm willing to pony up a little money and pick up part of a percentage, but I want it to be fair, as John was saying. You know, the 25, 75 split seems to be working fairly well. It would be nice if we could ensure that. Thank you. I ask many. Uh, is it okay if I speak at, actually as a resident? Uh, that's fine. It, was there a response though to the earlier just to get through that piece? Uh, yes, I, I consulted the older, some of my older notes on um, when we discussed this at the September 30th meeting. Because the September, the, the, the most recent meeting was mostly, um, just saying, Peter's actually raised the same issues then. Um, but at the September 30th meeting, we did have considerable discussion about where the uh, upper limit and lower limit should fall. And in fact, um, initially we were discussing simply abolishing any limits uh, that the town would simply have to decide what participation would be appropriate for any given project. Um, the issue of fairness about, well, should non rate payers be paying for sewer, or should septic users be paying for sewer budgets at all, then, you know, we did come around to the idea that, yes, there should be a cap. Um, and uh, I think we settled on 25% because it was the, basically what the town, because it is the current floor, it is basically what the town has been paying. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brennan and your citizen voice. Yeah, my uh, citizen voice here, uh, so it's not as deep as the regular one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I also want to say that we, we deliberated a lot about these numbers and talked about how they were very necessary guardrails at the time, uh, these numbers being one quarter and two thirds. So as a resident, I would like to amend this article to keep the rest of the language here as Mr. Hilchi has submitted, but put back in the no less than one fourth, no more than two thirds of whole cost. Second. Yep. Are you commenting on the amendment? Are you commenting on? No. Okay, we'll have to hold. Do you have a point of order? Or? Yes. Rise the microphone and say your name. Your address. Uh, Skip Homestead, uh, Stillwater Road. Uh, basically, this is a comment to Lisa. Isn't this motion that uh, Mark just made out of order? It might be in order after we finish with with Bruce's. Did we vote on Bruce's? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Is there anyone not standing that would like to sit? There's room down front. If anyone's just make sure everyone's okay. Can I see something? Uh, if it's in relation to the amendment, you can come down to the microphone and state your name. Three and three yes. Mr. Rock, moderator, may I make a motion? Uh, no. no. We have to get this amendment in first, and then okay. we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you. This article, as written, if you read it, <clears throat> it doesn't refer to anything that we've been talking about. It doesn't refer to the percentages. It doesn't refer to anything. It, it talks. It sounds like you're looking for approval to make changes. You're giving the select board to make any changes they want, any time. And it's being used to. If you read one part, it says it authorizes the payment of the systems. What system? 
new the new system? Are you making changes for the new system? This doesn't even explain what we're doing. Mr. Slick, are you following Article 15? That's the article we're yes, on. Yes, I am. I believe that it's that language is in there. Uh, it's Sorry, yeah. It's a page back. I mean, my mistake. Here's a page. Here's the collect board, the ability to change from tools to any kind. Here's that. Thank you. I would like to make a motion to amend the previous motion, Article 15, to include that users shall pay no less than one fourth and no more than two thirds. Is there any discussion on that amendment? Uh, Mr. Decker, I'm going to recognize him before the call also. Mr. Decker, quickly. I can't hear you. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're already talking about the capital cost at twenty-five seventy-five. We're not talking about the operating expenses. That is correct. Right. And people I don't think really understand that the rate payers are going to still pick up all the costs associated with the operation of the plant. This is only this particular article is changed. It's only going to affect the capital cost and the engineering for the capital cost. It's not going to take care of the routine operation. Do we have one? That is still correct. Just want to make sure everybody understood. <laughs> Stephen Tees, on 6 Ward Avenue. Why are we discussing an amendment that basically guts the article? Can we just please vote on the article? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I, I have septic. Um, what's the percentage of hot homes here that have septic? About, um, Mr. Elgy. Well, uh, our understanding is that 1,200 people in town rely on private septic systems, and about a thousand rely on sewer systems. And so, so this article is going to allow the town to come together and collectively vote to say, "Oh yeah, we agree to pay up to 25 percent. That's fair to me." Thank you. Thank you. Was the call the question made that there be no further debate? So it takes two thirds of votes to uh, call the question, and then I'll uh, essentially reread the amended motion. So, all those in favor of calling the question? All those opposed to calling the question? That motion carries. Moderator? Uh, uh, we, we don't need to leave. We can get to that in a second if that's necessary. Um, so at this point, the motion has been amended. If you're looking at your guide, and Mr. Brennan, please correct me if, if I'm wrong. Essentially, the uh, in section two, where the words are struck, provided that it shall pay not less than one fourth nor more than two thirds of the whole cost, that line would go back in. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Is everyone following that? Yes. yes. So now there is a procedural question by Mr. St. Peter's. If you can come to the microphone. <laughs> I would move that the, uh, this article be uh, done by paper ballot. This is, uh, this is this article has become very decisive, divisive. You made your motion, sir. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Do you have a comment on This article has become very divisive. I've sat on the short committee previously and uh, it's been very divisive back then. I don't believe that people should be looking back and forth to see who voted yes or no. Um, it is not community. It is not something that gathers the community. It's something that separates the community. Unfortunately, sad to say, I've seen it happen too many times. That's why I request your support to do it by paper ballot so that nobody feels that they have to look at their neighbors and see how they voted and or not vote, which is more of a sad if the people are afraid to vote, Thank I don't care whether they vote for or against. Thank you. Are you coming on the map that we're going to use to vote? Uh, I have a procedural question. I thought the last vote <clears throat> was whether or not to call the question. 
and then we have not voted on the amended amendment itself. We have not. Uh, the question at this point was whether to vote on that amendment by secret ballot or to do a, a show of hands. That's okay, what I just want to be clear. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the vote by secret ballot is a majority vote. So at this point, unless there's any comments or questions on the method of voting, we're just voting solely on how we're going to vote. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of voting by secret ballot. All those opposed. So we will be showing, uh, voting by a show of hands. The motion does not pass. Uh, there has been a, uh, a call to question, so at this point there's no further debate. And uh, this vote is also by a simple majority. So all those in favor of Article 15 as amended, I'm sorry, just the amendment. Uh, so right now we're just voting on the amendment. So that would put this language back in if you voted yes. Uh, and then we'll vote on the underlying article with the new language if it's approved or without if it's not. Or we can go back and debate that. But at this point, the article to amend, all those in favor. So majority. Mr. M Mr. Moderator, can I ask you to clarify what you just said? Um, yes. In other words, I'll clarify. Thank you. Uh, at this point, you're voting on the motion to amend. Uh, so that would put the language that struck into the motion, or into the article at this point, of motion. Uh, and then we would take a second vote on the article as amended if you voted yes on this vote. If you vote no on this vote, we will then go back to Article 15 as it is on the screen, and you can debate that or vote on that at that point. Mr. Kilchie, does that clarify? It clarifies it for me. Thanks. Uh, the amendment would be a majority. Yes. All those in favor of the amendment. All those opposed? That motion does not carry. Okay. So we are back to Article 15 as it was originally moved and as it shows on the screen. Are there any questions or comment on, comments on that at this point? All of those in favor of the motion as presented? I'm going to count. carries by a simple majority. Article 16, Mr. McDaniel. Ready for more sewer? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I move, I move that the town amends chapter 150 of the town of Deerfield general bylaws as set forth in the warrant. Second. Second. Mr. McDaniel. So um, this is uh, this is reworking. Um, we're deleting Article Two, uh, Section One Fifty, in its entirety and replacing it with everything printed in the warrant article. And it's really just um, it's creating. Um, it's bringing our bringing our stuff up to date because it's really it, it has been out of date. So we're bringing all of our um, this is the bylaw real quick. Yeah, bringing our bylaw up to up to speed. <laughs> so, there's a lot going on. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot in here, but it, it, you know we really should have done this a few years back. We really need to clean up uh, the bylaw and, and get everything uh, brought up to speed. So this is this is what this does. Is there any comments or questions? All those in favor of the article as presented? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 17, the short map. I move that the town repeal chapter 236, sewers of the general bylaws of the town of Deerfield. And said repeal shall not take effect until the town adopts, and said adoption is approved, the proposed amendment to Chapter 150, Sewers. Second. Ms. Shorza? Um, this again is an updated, this is our attempt to update this. This is written under the Board of Health. It should be written under the Select Board acting as sewer commissioners, um, or whoever is doing this, whoever will be the sewer commissioners in the future. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented? <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. That's it. Article <laughs> 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 18, Mr. McDaniels. <laughs> so I move that the town appropriate the sum of $12,300,000 to fund this construction, renovation. Oh, excuse me. Let me start that over. Um, I move that the town appropriate the sum of $12,300,000 to fund the construction, renovation, expansion of the Tilton Library, including demolition, landscaping, paving, utility, and other site improvements incidental or directly related to such construction, renovation, and expansion, and all necessary architectural, engineering, or other professional and legal expenses and fees associated with this project and including temporary uh, library operational space, storage and moving expenses, furnishings and equipment, and for all other costs incidental or related thereto, and in order to fund said appropriation, authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow said funds pursuant to general law chapter 44, section seven, or any other enabling authority and issue bonds and notes there, uh, therefore to authorize the town to apply for any grants or loans available for the project and accept and expend the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners grant of $3,944,338 for the project described in this article and further that the amount of the authorized borrowing under this vote shall be reduced by the amount of any grants received for the project prior to the issuance of bonds or notes under this vote Provided, however, that the vote taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon approval by the voters of the town at an election to exempt from the limitations on total taxes imposed under General Law Chapter 59, Section 21C, parentheses, Proposition 2 and a half, the amounts required to pay, uh, pay the principal of and interest on the borrowing authorized by this vote. Second. Mr. McDaniel. So um, this is approval sought from town meeting to exempt the uh, 12 million 300 thousand from the limitations on total taxes, Proposition Two and a Half for the cost and renovation of the expansion of the Tilton Library. Um, so it'll be, a, you know, we'll have a general um, an election vote for a uh, debt exclusion. And then I think there was a presentation by the library committee and, and um, Candace uh, Bradbury Carlin for the. 
So yes, there's going to be a brief uh, presentation and slideshow, so uh, just no comments or questions during that process, and we'll pick up discussion after that and uh, some other comments. Can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, so we're done with the sewer. On to the library. Um, so the library, believe it or not, is an essential service in town, much like police, fire, senior services, and schools. Um, it's a core of the community. Uh, we're, we're, lo we're located central in town. We serve everyone from babies to seniors, and we provide just about everything you can think of. It's, it's about much more than books. Um, we have also outgrown our building, and we need a bigger boat. My lovely system. <laughs> so, um, our building was constructed in 1916, and while we may have one of the most well-maintained buildings in town, it's an old building. So, it's old, it's aging, it's inflexible. We have no space for our teens. Teens love the library. They come to the library and they try to fit into the little room that was once a closet, or they spread out on the lobby floor. Uh, we have one bathroom in the building, so it's not very accessible. We don't have uh, energy efficiency at this point. We don't have good HVAC system at this point. And we could have a lot better access to technology and better storage for both the items that we lend out and just general storage. So we need a better boat. So a little history here. This conversation started Likely before this date, but to my knowledge, starting around 2009, um, we li libraries are required to do what's called a five-year plan or a strategic plan every five years. And so the strategic plans happening in 2009, 2014, and 2019, um, during which we opened it up to um, a lot of residents from the community, it was, it's been very clear all along that we need to expand and improve these facilities to to handle what we are offering to the community and to our growing community. So in 2014, we got approval from the Deerfield Select Board to move forward and to fill an application for the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners grant. And then in 2015, we assembled a team, uh, some of which will meet tonight. We have a project manager, an architect, and a building committee made up of residents of the town. And we went and assessed the needs and uh, filled out an application. And in 2017, we found out that we did get a grant. We were on wait list number 15. Five years later, going through COVID, unexpected, uh, 2022, just a few months ago, we got offered our grant. They give us, the MBLC gives us six months to secure funding for their portion of this cost, which is just shy of $4 million. And if we don't secure the funding by then, we could lose it all, and I don't know what the chances are of getting that again. And now we're going to talk about our design, and I'm going to introduce Phil O'Brien. Thank you. Thanks for having me, you all. Um, we are in the schematic design phase, and that basically means that we're looking at uh, kind of large, big picture items. Um, so you can see floor plans here on the, on the, on the low portion of the screen. Um, your existing building is down at the bottom portion of that. Uh, we're looking at a two-story addition. We're going to have expanded uh, adult services on the upper floor for the most part. Uh, a teens department of their own uh, that's bigger than a closet. Um, downstairs, we're going to have a, an expanded children's department, meeting spaces, quiet study spaces, um, the, and the building is planned to be very flexible, so as things change, uh, as time goes on, it'll be easy to move things around. We also understand that there's been some concern about the location of the building. Because we're in the schematic design phase, we can still move some things around, save the trees, and do everything else that we need to do. Um, and on the top left, you can see um, your, your existing beautiful building out at the front, on the right, and in the back. We've designed a, uh, an addition that's sympathetic uh, to, the, to the original design. We're trying to be a good neighbor um, and, uh, and really take advantage of the beautiful building we have. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to get another 100 years out of this beautiful building. Thanks, Phil. And now I'm going to bring on um, Daniel Pallada, our project manager. 
try, I'll try to go as quickly as I can. I was just going to quickly talk about the grant process itself. Uh, you have received your grant, and uh, is, one, this is a two-step process. You're going to vote tonight. Uh, Two-thirds vote required for the appropriation, and then at the ballot box, a 50% vote. That will complete the grant application, and your first payment of $800,000 will come shortly thereafter. Uh, there will be five payments of approximately $800,000 to complete your grant cycle. Um, they are in successful fiscal years, although with the grant program, sometimes they double it up. Um, this is the last year of the grant program uh, where you uh, qualify if you complete the planning grant cycle, which is what you did. Going forward, they're going to be treating the libraries like they treat the schools, where it, it, it'll be uh, more on a, uh, uh, a need basis determined by uh, people in Boston as opposed to this program, which is one of the very few programs that sends money west of Worcester. <laughs> The total project costs $12,300,000. Uh, the grant is $3,944,398. Uh, we get $100,000 if we meet the building lead certified. Uh, that's not lead silver or lead gold or lead platinum, which costs more money to do than to, than to get back. Just to be certified, we're going to get $100,000. And the fact that we're staying in the historical building is uh, we're almost there to get that hundred thousand. So we're we're, we're ninety five percent sure we'll get hundred thousand dollars, and they're expecting to raise uh, two million dollars uh, from, from those of you who have deep pockets. So feel free to write a check before you leave. <laughs> Lively nature. So. Thanks, Dan. Okay, so the question of the year, how will this uh, impact my taxes? It's, uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a small amount, comparatively. Um, we have lived through a really unique, we're still living through a unique situation with COVID, and because of this, um, all the libraries across the state, they're in the same position that we are right now, and I think at least one other is having a town meeting right now about the same thing in Eastern Mass. Um, their, their costs went up when we got a second cost estimate. Not a surprise, but still daunting. And so I really want to thank, and I want all of you to thank our select board, because they pioneered, the Deerfield Select Board pioneered a push to meet with all the um, 11 other towns that are getting a grant across the state, like we are, and wrote letters to the governor, to the head of the Senate, the head of the House and Ways and Means Committee, and they got the attention of 40 legislators the serious attention, and they are drafting a bill. And <laughs> and so it's been really exciting to see that, to see the power of ideas, and um, the library loves the power of ideas, by the way. And um, and so if that comes to pass, and we feel really confident about that 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 would be an additional $4.3 million and would bring your tax bill down to pennies per week. So that's really exciting. Um, so this, like, like Dan was saying a minute ago, that this vote just brings us to the next step and will also give us some time to get more information and more certainty about this additional money. So it's true. I really want you to think about this, that this is really a once in a lifetime opportunity I know we come, we come together as a town to vote on, on how to spend lots of money on big projects in town, but this is really a unique situation. And um, I really want to thank the Capital Projects Committee and the Finance Committee for supporting this project and recommending it, um, because they see what we see, that really is, this is something that's not to, to be passed up. If we do pass this up, I don't know if we'll be given this opportunity again. Thank you. Does the, uh, the finance committee wish to comment? Yes, we have a. Okay. 
Um, we, have, we have a couple slides also just to quickly take you back through the finances, although um, the comment you just heard covered a good portion of it. Okay. Next slide. That was easy. Um, so you, the $12.3 million estimate is a very recent estimate that was, I, I don't know if anybody mentioned that, but that was redone this summer. Um, so that's a very up-to-date estimate. So if you start at the top of that and work down, we're starting at the $12.3 million at the top. Um, as Dan mentioned, there's a $3.9 million grant from the NBLC, which is guaranteed. Um, there's a $100,000 LEED certification amount, which is certainly expected to come in. Um, and then the library has committed to raising, um, it has a goal of raising $2 million in donations. So if you take that down, the library takes care of that amount, that leaves $6.2 million for the town to take care of. Of that, $1 million is eligible for CPA funding. Um, we do have $1 million in the CPA account um, that could be used for this project if that were approved, you know, went through the whole CPA process. So that fund is available. Um, and if the town votes to do it, it could be used. The $4.3 million is, I, I wrote down subsidy, that's not the right word, but it gives the connotation. It might be ARPA funds, it might be a different amount of money, a different pot of money, um, but that was the request, and that's the 12 towns across the state going together to ask um, for funding from the state, and that leaves just shy of a million dollars um, left. Next slide. So. Um, the Finance Committee went into this assuming that well, we have to be prepared that that $4.3 million may not come through, right? Um, it is requested, there's a lot of enthusiasm for it, but there is no guarantee at this point. So when we vote right now, we need to be prepared um, mentally that it may or may not happen. So what we came up with was a low loan estimate of $5.2 million and a high estimate of $6.2 million. So that gave us sort of a, a bracket that we were looking at. And then we said the interest rate, we won't know the interest rate that we're going to have until we do the final borrowing, which is when the building is complete. So that's gonna be like 2025 or something. So in order to bracket that, we estimated that the interest rate would be somewhere between three and seven percent. So that's our our bracket. We have a low loan estimate, a high loan estimate, a low interest rate, and a high interest rate. If you look at that um, up in that blue part in the top right hand corner, what that comes down to is an annual payment of somewhere between three hundred fifty and five hundred ninety thousand per year for the town. Um, if you look at that on your taxes. That would be somewhere between 42 cents and 70 cents on the tax rate. So right now the tax rate is 15.17. That would increase it 42 to 70 cents. Um, and so for the average single family home, it's somewhere between 146 and 244 dollars, which is a three-ish to five-ish, 2.8 to 4.7 percent increase. So if you look at the next slide. Um, this is the that estimated tax bill impact of the library loan on your house. So if you look at this orange section here and you go down, third one down, that's the average single family home price in Deerfield is 340,459. So the estimated tax bill impact you can see is somewhere between 146 to 244 dollars per year. Um, and then, so if that state subsidy comes through, or whatever you want to call it, ARPA funds, um, it would be down around $54 per year, or might it be under that if we did CPA funding and everything worked out perfectly, right? Um, so if everything works perfectly, we're in a beautiful spot, and probably everybody would vote for the library, but we need to be prepared if that state subsidy doesn't come through. Um, to have that value. So we're going to leave those values up there for a second, and um, I want to summarize the, the Finance Committee discussion on this. Um, like many things, the opinion was not unanimous. We had sort of two opinions. One opinion is the library has worked really hard to obtain a large grant. There's a potential for significant additional state funding. No other recent process 
project has brought $4 million to town. I mean, this is a big grant. There's additional significant donor support. There's a lot of goodwill towards the library. The current building space, as you just heard from Candace, is limited, it's not very accessible. This work would rejuvenate a historic town building and would provide space for community gatherings. So there's a lot of really strong positives for this project. There's some negatives to the project. It's potentially an expensive project. Town residents have seen large increases in their taxes and in their sewer fees in recent years and are kind of feeling that pain. Um, debt for this project that we incurred would be outside the Prop 2.5 limits, so this would be in addition to the 2.5% increase that you see on your funding. There are people in town who are on limited incomes that are suffering from those increases in taxes and other expenses. There's other potential projects on the horizon. And we're also facing a fairly challenging budget year when we need to deal with high inflation um, and heavy demands on town employee time. Great. So all of these projects, I mean, there, there's good and bad for this. All these projects go through a cost-benefit analysis. In this case, the majority of finance committee members who were at the meeting felt that the benefits outweighed the cost, and the finance committee did support this project um, at the vote. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other comments before we take comments from the... Uh, I just wanted to see if the... So were you going to make No, okay. Uh, anyone have any comments or questions to the microphone? I just... I would just like to clarify that the $1 million in the CPA funds is available, but if we use it for the library, it can't be used for other projects because it's been spent on the library. So you couldn't use it for senior housing. You couldn't... I believe it's discretionary, right? So it, it goes away for other projects. So I just want to make everybody aware of that. I'm not taking a position. I just think everybody should know that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to try to get some comments from the audience for a moment about this guy and then come to the table. Your name and your street? Juan and Gully North. Uh, I just need a little clarification. Um, you're talking about all these loans and, and the bills coming due, and you said the project probably wouldn't be completed until 2025. So, as far as the impact of, to our taxes, at that point, the total amount would impact us. But say this year, is there actually any impact? I, I guess I'm trying to, uh, to, to think about us sitting here okay. thinking, oh no, next year it's going to raise my back, you know. But it sounds like it's going to take longer than one year for this to happen. Is, is that, am I wrong? Yes. Somebody from the select board, who would like to kind of spare a question? So, the um, project director. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so as I indicated, when you complete the transaction, you're going to get a check from the Commonwealth. So the project will complete its design and go to bidding using the Commonwealth's money. So in this fiscal year, you're not going to see any impact to the town. As soon as we complete those documents, we get another payment from the Commonwealth for another $800,000. If you look at the cash flow uh, chart, you're in about our first or second month of construction before we start using the funds that you are going to appropriate tonight. Thank you. Uh, let's, get, is in relation to that question? Yeah, go ahead. Very quickly, I, th I think possibly you were asking because on the slide it said something about FY22 tax rate impact. Um, what, and I didn't convey that very well. What we used to calculate that was the FY22 total assessed value of the town. So what's that supposed to convey is like, if we were paying that amount this year, this would be the impact on your taxes. In FY25, it'll be different, but it, it, it's indicative. Um, I think we'll just go back and forth, so if you'd like to... Hi, I'm Julie Pavacco, a former children's librarian at Tilton, and I was... Um, <laughs> and I just have a few short notes. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just going to ask you um, to understand what Dan Pilato was saying, is that this is the next step to finish off his grant. If you could vote yes tonight, then we can bring it to a vote to the town, and that will give us the opportunity to find out more information, even though they've done a really great job. 
It will also um, give me a chance to sell it more to you. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do, is that this, we need it. That I, I lived it. I lived seniors crawling over little children to get to a bathroom. It's, <laughs> it's um, it, we just really need it. And um, I won't take more of your time because I will be on your field now. And um, you can also ask me any question um, and I will answer why we need this space. I did think one thing. The library's on this budget one. years I, ago was set up so that staffing the way, yeah, is not going to need a lot of new staffing to run this building. Sometimes when you expand something, you're going to need more. We already have a cleaning service. We already have um, enough staff to cover the hours we are right now. So we're not going to be like, like, oh no, how are we going to cover? We're not going to get more staffing. We also are the only place in town that has the ability to keep on raising money to go towards these projects. And we are the only place in town that gives you money for what you put in. You can come in and borrow a hotspot. You can, um, and that's what I did to save my Wi-Fi. And you can um, print things for a donation. That's not driving down to Staples. Um, and you can borrow items from the library that can be hundreds of dollars that you wouldn't buy online or through Barnes & Noble. So please consider voting tonight, yes, for this and then learn more information and take it to the final December meeting. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, and I'll like Wolf Cole Mount Road and to um, reiterate on the early point, but to reiterate one of Julie's points. Tonight you're going to be hearing lots of pros and cons, but I sincerely hope that you will vote yes tonight. We have over 3,000 voters in Deerfield, and that's a lot more than are in this auditorium right now. And this is such a big project. I think it, it seriously needs to be brought before all of the voters in the town. And the only way that will happen is if you vote yes tonight, no matter what your position is on the library. So please, yes. I know it's tempting, but we can just keep the applause. I just want to get everybody's voices in, so we can go ahead. That's too bad, because I love applause. <laughs> uh, my name is Emily Gaylord. I live on Grave Street. I hope you're going to vote for the library two times. Um, and those of you who will be trick-or-treating, I asked the 11-year-old next door for candy advice, so I think it's going to be very good. Um, I work from home. My morning routine is to get my three-year-old out the door. She's never heard of the word hustle. Swing into one of our local establishments for coffee, get home, where I work intently until the tiny tornado that I live with comes home. I work for an environmental nonprofit that provides practical and equitable solutions to climate change. I do that work so I can look my little girl, my tiny tornado, in the eye and say I did something today to make the world a little better, a little safer, to make sure the problems that we're facing right now are not the are different ones than the ones that you'll face in the future. Too often we're concerned with right now to realize that every choice we make is going to affect every choice down the line. A library provides learning opportunities, activities, and for a mom like me, some peace and quiet. And the library like the one plan can also be a date night, never heard of it, um, a meeting space, and at some point my three-year-old will be a 13-year-old and I'll be extra glad for the library then. Yeah, okay. Deerfield is a place of stability and I know we all love yeah, this town so good. much. It's an intergenerational family and a downtown that looks like a postcard and hasn't this October been insane. So beautiful. I want it to stay that way. I want to look my little girl my tiny tornado in the eye and say, today I voted for something that will make your world a little safer and a little better. I voted for the library now so that you don't have to have this conversation all over again in the future without $4 million to support it. And considering my morning routine of getting caffeinated from one of our many local businesses, it feels right to spend the same amount as I do on just one of those cups of coffee. That's before all the additional spending or subsidy or whatever, ARPA, um, as I do on a building that's so central and visible in our town. Like, this is part of the fabric of our downtown. So, I hope you'll vote yes. 
Thank you so much, and please come say hi when you're trick or treating. Thank you very much. Yes. You're hearing more, day your street, South Deerfield. I want to talk in favor of the library, whatever we can do to support it. My kids practically grew up in the library. Uh, in the last few years of my husband's life, when he was pretty much housebound, the library saved his mind, it saved him from going completely crazy. Uh, we moved to this town specifically because of the education, the emphasis on education, and I know that the library is a major part of that. And the library doesn't give just books, it gave so much in the way of activities. Uh, both my kids had their first jobs at the library as volunteers. I think they were still in grammar school when they started, but they, um, they kept doing that all through high school. So I, I'm, I'm just really proud of this town and, and I hope that we support the library. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. Sharon Paterk, I was your crossing guard for over 40 years. Thank you. I took care of your children in many ways. And there's many more out there. One of my greatest concerns was food for them, clothing. You don't know how many days. And my family here tonight can support me and tell you people how many kids I bought in boots, hats, mittens, clothing, school supplies for over the years. And I still worry about them. The day I decided I was going to retire, my biggest comment to my family and to many of you sitting here tonight was, who's going to take care of my kids? Well, guess what? I'm the president of South County Triad for Seniors. Over 14 years I put into seniors in this town to make sure each and every one of you are safe in many ways. Part of my triad team is here tonight and they can verify this. I worry about you as much as I've worried about Deerfield Elementary School children. Frontier principal, assistant principal came to me recently and said, Sharon, we have so many needy children in this high school, you can't even imagine. You can't. Recently, I adopted one through the triad program. We made sure he had all his equipment to play sports like every other child in this school. There's needs out here. Years ago, our parents used to give us a little piece of paper, and it was Christmas time. Mrs. Pichard. Put on this paper. Mrs. Truck, we just need to, to round into the library. We appreciate I'll, it. I'll, I'll wrap this up in one second. There's a difference between wants and needs. The library right now, I feel in my heart, even though I was one of your trustees for many years, this is a want. It's not a need right now. I'm worried about all you people out here that I see today and the increases in your taxes and everything else that goes on. I'm going to tell you one incident and then I'll sit down. This is something my triad team deal with recently in the town of Deerfield. And this is what affects me voting yes or no tonight. We had uh, an encounter with a senior recently that had no food. He was eating pet food. Yes, pet food. And the people in my triad team can verify this. And you want a want tonight. I get it, people. I want wants for all you seniors in the town of Deerfield. I'm sorry, but I cannot support this at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sherilyn Walensky. I live on River Road. I've been a resident for over 70 years in Deerfield. Um, I, my comments are truly procedural. Uh, last week, I sent to each of the select board an email 
requesting that serious um, research be done on who owns the library because at your last meeting I think it was Mr. Nada presented the deed, which is a legal document, saying uh, our boron from Sawmill Plain, I believe it was, is the owner of that building. We're looking at millions of dollars being asked for, which is, you know, reasonable, I guess, but it's coming out of taxpayer money. We need to know if that deed is going to hurt us when this whole procedure actually gets begun and finished. And I'm, I must say, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, select board, but not one of you have the courtesy to write back to me and say, thank you for your email, we will look into this. I was disappointed, you're elected officials. It would have been nice to hear from one of you. However, I must say, I did write to the library. I don't know who the person was that drafted the return email. Thank you, um, phantom person, because you answered questions. You gave me guidance. You made me want to look at the Tilton Library website to get more information. So you, you must be here, but I don't know who you are. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, honestly, I totally appreciate it. So to this minute, we still don't have an answer about that deed. Now, I'm just, it got me going. And when I get going, look. But the Massachusetts Public Library Trustees Handbook, which is about 130 pages in length, has a section about construction and renovation. And uh, I know we, the library is run by seven board trustee members and it is public, so this is information from that handbook. And one of the things that jumped out at me in this handbook said, there are possible legal issues, including purchase or transfer of land, deed restrictions. This is in the manual for a board of trustees. So the deed is a significant piece to this puzzle. My question is, when the grant was written, and I was a uh, principal at an elementary school uh, in, uh, uh, nearby, and I am very familiar with grants. Grants are very, very specific. There had to have been a question in there about who owns that building. How was that answered? Because it, it doesn't have the town of Deerfield on the deed. Can somebody answer that? Sure. Town Council, would you like to respond? Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Moderator. So the question was asked in the original um, grant application and the question was answered that the, the inhabitants of the town of Deerfield, pursuant to the will of Chauncey Tilton, as reformed and approved by the Supreme Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, gave the land to the town, the inhabitants of the town of Deerfield, which is accepted by the town of Deerfield at their annual town meeting on March 2nd, 1914. And so the town owns it, they are the beneficiaries of the trust, and it's owned by the town, the inhabitants of the town. At the time the land was given to the town, the funds from the Tilton Will were used to build the building. And once that happened, the trustees operated the library itself for the benefit of the inhabitants of the town of Deerfield, and it was a requirement that the town accept the, the land and the buildings, and they did. Okay, but the town, I mean the deed, a legal document, does not have any reference in it. I, I actually, it's online for people that want to look at it. Here's, here's my dilemma too. We, my husband and I experienced a, a personal problem with the town of Deerfield regarding the deed. Here was the problem. There is a very small stretch of road off of Eastern Avenue that was gifted to the town of Deerfield many, many years ago by a man named Charlie Dean. He gifted it as a right-of-way for the town. A few years ago, the, the Board of Selectmen decided to put that land for sale, and they asked for sealed bids. As far as I know, there were three sealed bids, including one being ours. We were outbid by the developer who has built the 55 and older community. He was the winner. 
And actually, in hindsight, it was great for us because he went to begin his project and had to stop. Why? Because the deed, which the select board apparently did not fully read, said that if that road is, not, uh, is discontinued as a right-of-way, the property belongs to the abutters to the midpoint of the road. My husband and I got more land, a quarter of the back piece. Uh, the family in front of us got a quarter of the land uh, in front of us. Just tie it a little All right. Right. Well, here's, a here's my point. Here's my point. This was a deed problem that the town did not fully look into. And because of it, that builder could not build. All the three owners of that abut that land, we now own the land. So a deed is a huge piece to this puzzle. And until I hear, and I'm sure many other people in this room who know about this deed here, that we are free to go because this deed is not going to you know, stop production after the town has paid whatever amount on their taxes. I'm not going to feel good as a taxpayer knowing we haven't done all our ducks in a row. And I'm, I'm going to ask publicly now, since privately I didn't get any information, please check out the deed to make sure we will not have another lawsuit on our, on our hands. We had the lawsuit for Dollar General, this thing down the road. Enough. Do your homework. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. Well, I just thought to say that we didn't reply because we're in the midst of having our attorneys look into that and to double check her opinion from several years ago. So waiting for her opinion tonight, knowing this question was going to come up, we waited to hear the answer. So, But what I'm saying, Trevor, I didn't know if you got the email. Mm -hmm. But then when all three didn't return, it's courtesy. Yep. I'm big on I courtesy and politeness. So. I'm big on it. Yep. And I didn't feel I was respected. Sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Mr. Hilchey. And I also would like to say I apologize for that. Uh, occasionally what happens is uh, an email comes in and it's referencing the town administrator and all of the select board and several other people from different committees. And I have I have responded to people, and I'm not excusing myself because I understand what you're complaining about, but I responded and uh, just caused confusion. And so um, I promise to respond to your next email. <laughs> well, hopefully it will be that the deed, uh, that's all I'm concerned about. Are we legally in good standing that this deed is not going to cause headaches for this town in the form of a loss? That's Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Great. Great to see you. My name is Mark Russo. I'm a resident of uh, Steam Hill Road in Deerfield. <laughs> and um, I'm, just, I'm just here because I, hopefully on behalf of the taxpayers of the town that maybe aren't regular library users, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't been in that library for probably 30 years. So I know the people that use it are here en masse tonight. And, Rightly so, I hear they do a good job and it's, it's a good product. On the other hand, the size of this project scares the hell out of me as a, as a taxpayer. It seems like there's so many unknowns. Uh, and of course, the pressure's on us to rush into this because the state is dangling 3.9 million. And it's almost like a uh, like uh, when you're at a car dealership and you, you know you get this place that's good for two days and you lose it. But, but my concern is we're in challenging economic times. Um, and I think there's a, there's a number of questions that, if they haven't been addressed, be, and there are a number of risk factors, and, and we might be pretty reckless to forge ahead if we, if we don't consider these things. Um, first of all, we were all kind of shocked by the incredible increase in the cost of this. It went from $8 million at last, the last year's uh, town, uh, uh, town report mentioned $8 million and people involved were quite confident that we were going to come in on budget. A year later, it's up $4 million, 50%. We're in a huge, a very absurd economy. There's a lot of uh, you know, there's, uh, supply chain issues, there's uh, inflationary issues on the building projects, materials, I should say. Uh, 
Many of the projects that were familiar with them all had cost overruns, big ones, since they've been approved. But all this weighs back on the taxpayers who have to come, uh, come to the rescue. Um, and uh, interest rates for the short term here are, are trending up. That's another potential burden on, on the uh, cost of the loan. Um, the $2 million in pledges, I'm pretty confident that giving a apparent level of support for the community that that's going to be readily obtainable. But I've had some experience funding financing projects uh, with, with significant reliance on uh, pledges, and they don't often materialize. So to the extent they don't materialize, uh, that's something that the taxpayers will have to come with, uh, have to deal with. The other thing is that every year we push up against the limits for Proposition 2 and a half. It restricts how much our, our budget can grow, and our operational needs push it to the limit every time. All of these projects result in a and the, debt, uh, the debt override. So it, it, it takes the, uh, the, the payments outside of Prop 2.5. Um, we have other major uh, capital projects that are envisioned, uh, substantial amounts of money. This is something we, we want to do. But if the sewer and old air fuel goes down, we're not going to be able to say we want to do this or don't. I think uh, we're going to be hearing that the state's going to require that we do this. Well, we've got a fifty thousand dollar penalty a day, or something like that. So, all of these projects will probably involve debt, uh, debt, uh, um, debt services going <coughs> beyond the normal uh, uh, proposition two and a half limits. So, I think there's a lot of people um, that their taxes are, are going up here. You know, they're starting to get they're starting to get painful, and, the, and and we have to be very concerned how we spend the money. I wish we had time to revisit this project to see. Obviously, the library has needs, but $12 million dollars for what we're talking about, 10,000 square foot addition, that's an awful lot of money. There's spaces in there, community rooms and things like that. Maybe there's other, other projects in town that could accommodate those needs. And maybe, so maybe there are things that can be done to bring this the cost of the project down. We're rushing to get this thing get this thing done. So at, those are my concerns. Um, I respect the library and the people that run it and its patrons, uh, but I'm very concerned for the average tax, taxpayer account. I would like to know more about demographics of who are the people that are actually using the library and its services. How many are residents of Deerfield that go in at least twice a month? How many are just students that are kind of part there after school until their parents can pick them up? But I think these are all the, you know, just to, to uh, legitimize the demand for the, uh, for the services that justify that $12 million budget. I'm sure I forgot something, but I'll leave it. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Candace Bradbury Carlin, director, also a Stage Road Deerfield resident. So I just want to clarify a few things to the previous speaker. So um, the two, $2 million isn't um, just a, a shot in the dark. We've already raised um, $760,000, and some of those pledges, which we've confirmed, will go ahead, um, are five or six figure pledges. So and we've done the wealth capacity, with a fundraising um, consultant, and there's definitely, it's definitely doable in this town from, from the data that we gathered. Um, something that I want to say, no, I don't remember. Oh, they were graphers, yes. So every year, um, we do all libraries, uh, public libraries are, um, so they have to turn in a, a statistics report for the state in order for us to continue to get state aid. So we do get a little money from from the state if we meet a certain criteria, which we do, and, and most towns do. And so last year, we got, this is a low year, because we were just coming out of COVID, or starting to come out of COVID, hopefully, 30,000 visits a year. Prior to uh, the start of COVID, 2019, 44,000 visitors a year. Of the 30,000 visitors last year, 12,000 of those were um, to the children's room. And we see kids, 
teens coming every day, we see lots and lots of seniors. We see adults with, uh, with children. We see adults without children. We basically see it all. And um, we don't try, we don't have a, a, um, a data, data tracker about demographics for age other than we know which part of the building they've been in. So children's room, 12,000 visits a year, and upstairs, uh, like I said, about 18,000. Thank you. Thank you. Can you say Peter? Bruce St. Peter, Snowberry Circle. Uh, first off, I want to everybody to understand. I, I do support the Tilt Library. I support more so the friends of Tilt Library in my own way. However, I'm a little hesitant to support the building. I'm not arguing as the need of the additional space, only the individual affordability and timing of this project, which uh, is, in my opinion, been a little bit overlooked by the finance committee. There's a request that your state vote yes tonight, as there might possibly be some additional funding available before this goes ballot. It's my understanding that legislation for this potential funding is only in a draft mode, so there's probably would not be any definitive word before ballot time, only another maybe. For those that are on the fence, and this is what this is more targeted to, it sounds like a wonderful idea, but tonight's vote requires a two-thirds majority. And if it goes to the ballot, only a simple majority would be required at that time. Therefore, the thought that you can always change your mind is not as simple as it seems. If you vote yes now, and you decide to vote no later in the ballot box, your vote is not as important as it is right now. It's not to persuade or dissuade anybody, only to make sure you understand the importance of your vote either way. Taxing right now for someone in the, in the South Area Water District, in the South Area Fire District, with an average home is presented by the Finance Committee is $340,000, which with all the taxes, the Fire District, the CPA surcharge, and so forth, amounts to $5,972. The, the sewer debt that, uh, that we're going to be heading into is $92. Finance committee uh, forecasts are based on the annual average increase in your regular real estate taxes, $210. Since it appears only reasonably assured the reimbursements of the library grant, the LED grants, and the partial CPA grant, and some portion of $2 million fundraising effort, I'm a, and I'm using the highest in the $244 for library debt, this numbers alone adds up to a tax bill if it started this year $6,500. An increase of $545, not $244, and that is just assuming normal situation. In addition, there are also those on the sewer system who are going to see a substantial hike in their sewer bills due to the increase in cost of O&M, also a substantial increase in capital costs just to, to the previous Article 15 that we just voted in. Overall cost of living has increased substantially. My opinion is there is too many maybes for my support, especially knowing the number of additional proposals that are in the near future. It could cost millions of dollars. There is no one has addressed the additional utility costs, maintenance costs, or anything else that were addressed in the previous meeting. And I believe the electric bill alone was anticipated to go from like 3,500 to 36,000. Uh, there's been no talk of and the maintenance of that building, which for the first year or two should be fine, but it's going to be a very high-tech building, and if we take our experience with the highway garage, we're spending a ton of money every year just to maintain the high-tech equipment over here. So there's other things, and based you know, with the economy that's going on right now, I just find it very hard to support, even if it is a fantastic possibility, but that's the problem. It is a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thanks for your time. I'm going to keep this short because uh, it's getting late. And um, I want to thank, oh, Erica Ross, Green Oak Crossing. I want to thank the Finance Committee. It was really exciting for me to see you come in one, one way, find out more facts about the project, really take a look at it, and switch your, um, switch your recommendation. That's one of the first times I've seen that happen, and I found it really heartening. Um, 
My husband and I were talking about this project the other night. I talked to a lot of you about this project. I've written about it in the recorder. I am a mental health therapist. I've done a lot of work through the library. I've done mindfulness classes for teens that I could not do in the school because I wasn't able to push in. I did them through the library. I did writing class for seniors. I couldn't do that anywhere else. I did it at the library. I'm going to keep doing these programs. Tons of people can do these programs. And once we have an actual room to do them in, it's going to be amazing. I've had to do them online, or I've had to try to like squish in the children's room. So this is going to be an amazing opportunity for children, for teens, for seniors, for all our community. Well, my husband and I were talking about it the other day, and I was explaining to him the finances. And I said, if we don't do it, we, we send $4 million back to the state. So we all sit around here complaining that like Western Mass never gets any money from Boston. We just got $4 million from Boston. How is it going to look for us to go, no thanks. Are they going to give Deerfield any more money? I wouldn't. So Mr. Russo said that it felt rushed to him. And I get that maybe this is all new information for some people. But this project started in 20, 2009. This was approved. The, they, they did all the studies and everything and got found money for that outside of the town for, through grants, 2014 town input. This was then, uh, the grant was applied for, we got the grant, we were told we would get the grant, but we were on the list in 2017, and now we've gotten the grant. It's the best planned out and thought out project I've seen in all my years in Deerfield. It follows every single thing that the Finance Committee suggests we do. Do the study, get the grant, take the grant, do the work. It's unfortunate that it's happening after COVID, when anyone who has built anything knows that costs are ridiculous, right? I mean, even the cost of my fire pit was like ridiculous, right? So it's unfortunate timing, but we still have $4 million from the state. And if you vote yes tonight, we have almost probably three months before the ballot vote to see what other money we can generate. We are fundraising. There is this ARPA money, and people are excited about it. I think it would be really negligent to vote no now when we may have more money coming in, and we know there's another vote ahead of us. So that's the counterpoint. Thank you. Thank you. Becker. Yes, uh, Bob Becker. The question I have is, the building going to have to have any asbestos abatement? any lead paint abatement, the existing building, and have all those costs been factored in, or are we going to see a substantial extra uh, for this coming forward? If somebody could tell me that, I'd appreciate it. Hold on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, who's live? With regard to uh, asbestos abatement, the answer is yes. Uh, there is asbestos in the Library, it's mm -hmm. typical for a building of that period, and the repairs that we've done over the past years prior to 1978. Uh, we do have in the budget to evade it, and uh, we're going to remove it. Thank you. Hi, Lily Dwight, South Hill River Road. Um, just two things. One, I'm the chair of the Senior Housing Committee, and I also served for you on the Community Preservation Committee. and. It was mentioned earlier, concern about the availability, the impact of the funds on possible senior housing, and I can assure you there's none at all. Uh, two years ago, we moved $500,000 for senior housing, and that's preserved. Our committee's intention right now is to return most of that to the town ultimately. No promises, but that's our goal and that's what we're working on. But this has no impact on senior housing. I just wanted to make that clear. Um, the other point that I find very interesting is the, the point about voting. I'm definitely voting for this to move forward because there are so many people not here tonight. So many people who can't get out on a weeknight. They have children. They have parents. They cannot have their voices heard. And I understand there's a difference between the two-thirds and the simple majority, but I really believe that an all-day vote is much more representative of the needs of the town. Thank you. Julie Chalfont, South Hill River Road. I have a South Hill River Road contingent at the moment. 
Um, two of my questions were actually answered by Bruce St. Peter's. I asked him a lot of questions. Um, one was the two-thirds now and the half later. Um, the other question maybe the architect can answer, which is the um, expected value, uh, cost of electricity and maintenance. You came up with a number the other night. And then the third question I have is a process question. Um, how do we request that we do this by paper vote rather than the end up vote? Um, that would be a, a motion. I move that we vote for this using a paper ballot. You certainly can do that at this point. If you don't mind, I, I was kind of thinking we finish debate and then make Okay, it, but I'll save that for later. Okay, thank you. Hi, so uh, in the next phase of um, design, all design development, we'll have all our engineers take a closer look and they'll look at a variety of different mechanical and electrical systems and do all the studies and so forth. So we were asked to put together kind of a kind of a quick look uh, at what it might mean. Uh, the biggest impact um, that we're looking at is what we carry in the budget right now is a, is a mechanical system uh, that is all electric, doesn't burn any fossil fuels. And as many of you know, electric heat costs a little bit more than, uh, than fossil fuel heat does. Um, and that is one of the drivers. The biggest driver on the energy cost and utility cost for the building is really the size of it. Um, it's significantly larger building than it is right now. Um, you, this is one of the smaller uh, public buildings in town at just over 3,000 square feet, and it's going to um, almost 13,000. Um, that's really what the big impact is. So you heard the numbers. Um, I don't remember exactly what they are for your existing, but what we're looking at for utility costs of the building is at about uh, 35, 36,000 a year for for electricity costs and no fossil fuel costs. Thank you. Oh, and solar credits may be, uh, may be available. We're also looking at the possibility for a photovoltaic array or solar panels on the roof, which could help uh, bring down the cost of that, obviously. The more money, uh, the more energy that we can generate on site, obviously, the less your, your electricity bills will be. Yes. Hi, Devin Thompson, um, South uh, Deerfield, Dairy Deer Street. Um, I just wanted to say I grew up as an AD kid in this town. Uh, I know for a fact there are very few places here where needy kids can go. Uh, you know, now I have something I can give back. I work with the kids here in this building, at Frontier. And, you know, even if I never go to the library myself, I know for a fact it will be the best thing I can do with my money to give it back to the community and directly to the needy kids in that community. Thanks. <laughs> because I was concerned that this building would oh, probably cost Carol. around 13 to 14 million dollars. Yeah. It wasn't very far off based on what we were trying to do with community center and town. No, it's Carol and this time. The select so I, I feel that it's not really okay. a question of you know whether we're gonna get money or not, um, whether it's about the money or surplus revenue. It's just a question of how much. Are we gonna get four hundred thousand or are we gonna get four million? I, I feel like we need to give the library a chance. There's a lot of enthusiasm in the other communities that I talk to, and I feel like it's for sure we're going to get some money. And so I need to have this project killed before we really know what we're going to get. Thank you. Mr. McCann. I do think it's, it, it makes sense to move forward with a vote, uh, a yes vote tonight, and um, give the opportunity to research more funding. Um, this building, you know, it is in bad shape. The spaces aren't good. Um, I, I was just over there a couple weeks ago looking at, you know, backup of water, water's in the brick, plaster's having issues. Um, if not now, when? You know, and it's just, as interest rates rise and the expense keeps going up, just looking at the sewer projects, how everything kind of increases all the time, um, I think now is the time to make the investment in a building like that. It's gonna take care of our children and our seniors for three years to come. Yes. Yeah, just your name and your street. Yeah. Rick Hallrock, uh, Valley View Lane. Uh, <clears throat> I'm all for uh, a better library and, and better facility, but I honestly don't 
feel as though we've done homework. I think I haven't heard of anyone mentioning building this in phases where you could plan the whole building, but then start with phase one and then get to a goal, and phase two and three, and just spread things out instead of all at once where you don't know what's going on in the world today. You don't know what products are going to be available, what product isn't going to be available, you don't know what the costs are going to be when you get there. So why not start in phases and just work your way up and help everyone. Help everyone in town that can't afford it. Help, help the people that would like the library and just work together. Thank you. Okay. I just want to say, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, the grant program doesn't allow us to do that. Uh, we do that back when you apply to the, to the grant. Um, as to the costs, and the costs seem to have come up a lot tonight. Uh, we did, you know, we did do a bona fide estimate based on the design, uh, which is typical for the grant process. We also updated that. Uh, we also updated that grant. Uh, the team that you have working for you uh, on the Tilton Library is the same team that successfully built uh, the Irving Library under budget and is successfully building the Greenfield Library, which is currently $1.4 million under budget in the middle of COVID. So we, we do know what we're doing with the costs, and we do know what we're doing with the estimates. Um, we just can't do it in phases. So the grant program prevents the phases. On the cost end of it, yes, the homework has been done, and yes, we did do it in incremental steps. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Roy Rigger, 45 Lee Road. Uh, I've been down this road before. I've been a project manager in my next job. And I'll tell you uh, one thing. I'm for the library. I really am. I like to, we would like to see, see a library built, a bigger library. I've used it many times myself, the library. Are you talking the to me? The problem is, oh. is that I doubt, this time with inflation, supply chain issues, me in the best of times, I ran into supply chain issues in my previous job, would cost one I would doubt if you get this in through under 18 million, maybe 24 million. That's what I suspect. So what I what I propose, what I haven't heard of here at all, is you should have a circuit breaker for the senior citizens who are fixed incomes that do not bear much more than that, that 144 or $200 in your taxes. Because it's going to go up much more than that. That's all I'd like to comment on at this time. Thank you, sir. With regard to inflation, uh, the project has uh, circuit breakers in the estimates. We are carrying 7.75% inflation uh, for the year coming up. We are carrying 7.5% uh, inflation for construction unknowns, and we're carrying 12.5% uh, escalation for design. So that's a lot of that's a lot of. Uh, escalation for this project. So we're not going to be hitting 18 to 24 million. This is going to be done for the appropriate amount. We're going to be we're going to be done on time. We're going to be done on budget. Yeah. Victor Warnes, Eastern Avenue. And it just seems to me that this is a community project. Library is one thing and that's where you're looking for funding, but isn't this a community project? Isn't this a senior center, a, a, a daycare, a preschool, whatever? And are there other funds that are available to supplement and to, to help out with this project? And I, I too would be surprised if it came in at even the current budget, but uh, maybe the funds would help. And I would love to see, as a senior, uh, I'd love to see a place to go, uh, feel comfortable in the community, and, and feel comfortable doing it. So, call it maybe a community library or community something. I don't know, but it's maybe there's other funding available too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we're going around here, 24 Kelly Drive, South Deerfield. Um, just going out with a few comments made today. Talked about uh, you know, 44,000 people, correct? Show up each year. Uh, if you break that out of you know a year, 365 days, it's 120 people a day. Um, if you break that down to the population of Deerfield, that's roughly 5%. So 
when we're talking about the numbers and things like that, we're talking about the 5%, not the 95% they're paying the taxes, right? But the taxes are gonna increase on that. So I just think further research should be done, whether it's, you know, I don't know if we can propose this or not, but proposing that at least 25% of the population of Deerfield should vote, and based on that majority vote, then you decide whether to move forward the library or not. Thank you. Mr. LG. I just want to thank everyone for the comments they've made tonight. Uh, I know that this is an issue that people have different opinions on. Uh, we've done a lot in the recent past to fund what I call physical infrastructure. Um, and people all agree pretty much that that's a need. And I would say that uh, human infrastructure is also a need. And we definitely would benefit from doing this project. But it is in the hands of the voters, so I would suggest that people give this chance uh, to move forward to a vote later. And I would like to also say that uh, all of us, Trevor, McDaniel, Carolyn Choiceness, and I have been working with jo Joe Cumberford, our senator, Natalie Blay, our representative, to try to shake the tree and get more money for this project. But you would be voting, basically, to expend $6.2 million, uh, because we don't know what those, where the money's going to come in. But I would argue that that's a good investment in the town. It will bring new life to the downtown. I don't know, I think 1950 or thereabouts was the last time anything new was built uh, in, the, in the what we call the municipal campus, which is town hall, the library, the church, uh, and the old 1888 senior center, former grammar school building. So, this could be a, have a big impact on attracting people to our town. Just as, uh, so that's all I have to say. Paul, no. Thank you. Is my voice back real? Is there a second? Second. Sorry. Uh, let's, we're going to call the vote first. At this point, we have to. So, uh, all those in favor of the vote? The vote. The vote has been called. Um, Julie, do you have anything? I would like to make a motion that we vote by paper ballot. Sure. Sure. Second. Sure. Can we talk to that or not? I'm sorry? Can we talk to that secret ballot thing? Yes. Uh, my name is Abe Peter. Abe on Gibbs. I live at 617 River Road. You know, um, I lived in Vermont and New England for many years now. Town meetings are our direct form of democracy. And um, we talk, the whole thing of town meeting is not an election. We talk to each other, disagree, agree, whatever. And then we vote openly, publicly. That is a tradition that's been going on for hundreds of years. For us to do secret votes, that's not how we do town meetings. I'm so shocked to hear that. I really hope you, we vote against it now and that it never comes up again. It's not an election. It's a town meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion on how we vote? Is there a hand at the table? Yes. I have heard people on both sides of the argument express concern about voting openly. Um, that's probably not working very well. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't just one side of the vote or the other side of the vote. It was people who favor and people against, both of whom were concerned about voting um, hands up in front of everybody with um, any repercussions that may have. That's why I brought it to you. Thank you. Mr. St. Peter. Uh, Julie, pretty much we agree with my comments, and um, if anybody pays any attention to Facebook and so forth, it's gotten past cordial, and I think that's a shame. I have had numerous comments myself of people who just refuse to come to town meeting because they are afraid to raise their hand because they will be uh, criticized. And I don't think this is a breach of town meeting. I think it's a sign of the times that the social media has created too much animosity between people. 
I think, I think it's sad that they have to do it this way, but I do believe that we will get a better response by going paper ballot because those people that look left and right and are afraid that even though they totally support the library, they can't comfortably vote, vote for it, will be afraid to vote at all. And I'm not trying to dissuade one way or the other, but I think the secret to paper ballot will have a higher turnout. Thank you. Yes. Moderator Gray, I think it's uh, um, poignant at this point that you hear from myself. My name is Carly Hamlin. I'm your interim town clerk. You're, first of all, I, I think you all should be proud of yourselves. It's a tremendous turnout for an open town meeting, um, one that I've never witnessed myself, and debate is always wonderful. I just want to share with you uh, a little bit of um, perspective for you before you take this vote, no matter how you take it. Um, currently, right now, the Votes Act allows each one of you, uh, as registered voters, to receive, if you should vote, the ballot. Um, and the select board is um, waiting in the wings tomorrow morning to, to take your action moving forward to set an election for December 6th. Currently, statistically, you need to know that there's a little over 3,100 residents that are voters in Deerfield. Right now, we have, underneath the Votes Act, the ability to send half of those registered voters ballots. So those folks will be getting that ballot at home. something to think about, and then they also have the option of coming to vote in person. That's a huge majority. Thank you. Uh, there's a call question. We can take that vote if you'd like. We'll have to, so there's been a call of questions, our second. So there's no further debate. Uh, all those in favor of voting by secret ballot. No, I'm sorry, sorry. All those in favor of calling the question to then take the vote. So all we're doing is saying whether it's going to be any more debate on it. Yeah, happy to do it. Yeah. All we're doing right now is voting on whether we want to talk anymore about whether we should have a secret ballot or not. So we're not voting on the article at all. Just about if you want to talk some more about a secret ballot or voting by your cards. So all those in favor uh, of calling the question so we take the vote. So there'll be no more debate on how we vote. So now there is a vote as to whether we will vote by secret ballot. All those in favor of voting by secret ballot. That's a majority vote. That motion does not, all those opposed. That motion does not carry, but so we will be voting by the show of cards. Uh, I do want to get the vote right, uh, so uh, I think we'll just do it by section, if everyone is comfortable with that. So uh, all those in favor of Article 18, as presented, we'll just do this section in the back.
Thank you. The person against the wall, do you have a, you're signed in? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, this section, you're all set here, thank you. Section, the third section. It is not. If anyone has a green card, they've been checked in. Front table. Thank you. 